Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of Cloud Deep Dive. In today's video, we will talk about a new feature launched by AWS, which is Amazon Cloud 53 Profiles. In this video, we will talk about what challenges customer had with Cloud 53 configuration management and how Cloud 53 Profiles will solve these challenges for the customer. We will talk about few use cases showing how customers are managing their DNS configuration today like inbound and outbound endpoints and how they are enabling application to application DNS management across their organizations and what challenges they are facing in managing these across their whole organization. Then we will show how customers can migrate to Route 53 profiles and simplify their administration of these DNS managements. Let's first talk about few challenges which customers are having today. In today's world, customers are using variety of DNS resources like resolver rules, DNS firewalls rules and rule groups, private hosted zones, and VPC DNS configurations. Managing all these resources across multiple accounts involves a lot of complexity and there's a lot of cost associated with it. Admins had no way to manage these at a central place, so they have to manage these separately along with the VPC or in their own account, wherever they belong to. Other challenge was the consistency. There was a no smooth way to share their DNS configuration across their multiple VPCs or their across their multiple accounts. Next, let's talk about few use cases and see how customers are doing their DNS management today. We'll start with inbound resolver endpoint. Here we have our simple architecture where on-prem is connected to AWS via either site-to-site -site or direct connect. We have a networking account for our own networking needs with a VPC in that. And then we have two applications running in a separate application one and application two accounts. Now my corporate data center applications or app server need to resolve to these applications. For that, we will associate our private hosted zones created in these two application accounts with my networking account VPC and we'll update our DNS server saying that any request coming from the corporate data center for app1.example.com and app2.example.com should go to my resolver inbound endpoint. I won't go in detail of these because I've already covered that particular uh, inbound resolver endpoint in detail in my earlier video and I'll put the link of that video in the description and on the right hand side corner as well. So after doing that, my on-prem servers will be able to resolve to this DNS names. Next, let's talk about outbound resolver endpoint. In this scenario, applications running in my application account one and application account two need to resolve a DNS server which is present on my on-prem corporate data center. For that, we create an outbound resolver endpoint and we create a resolver rule in my networking account which says that any request going for corp.example.com should go to the on-prem DNS server. Then, to make sure that the VPCs or application running in application account 1 and application account 2 can leverage this rule, we share this rule by using resource access management to these accounts. So after that, we associate these rules with these VPCs and now this application should be able to resolve to corp.example.com which is, which is present in my on-prem data center. So the third use case we have, what if my application account one or application one need to resolve the DNS of my application two? So one way to do that is, I can associate this private hosted zone with this VPC and I can associate this private hosted zone with this VPC across account by using the CLI. But think about if we have hundreds of VPCs here or hundreds of accounts here. So can this approach work? It's very tedious because then you have to associate the same private hosted zone with the multiple accounts here. So other way, what we can do is, we can create the resolver rules in our networking account. Like we'll say that app1.example.com will go to the inbound endpoint and similarly for app2.example.com it will again go to my inbound endpoint. So here you will notice one thing when we were resolving the 
DNS name from the corporate data center, we were sending the request to the DNS server. But in this case, we are sending it to inbound endpoints. So that's the one key change here, and I'll talk about why. The second thing what we are going to do that we'll share these rules the same way we did it for our on-prem corporate center DNS across our accounts. So my rule for app to dot example.com will be shared with application account one and similarly app1.example.com will be shared with my application two account and these will be associated with the cost one VPCs. Now any request from this application for app2.example.com will see okay there's a rule associated so it will send the request to the corresponding outbound resolver endpoint and it checks that okay if my app2.example.com the request should go to the inbound resolver endpoint so the request will go to the inbound resolver endpoint and this endpoint will check do we have any VPCs or private hosted zones associated with this VPC yes we do have app2.example.com associated with this VPC so this inbound resolver inbound resolver endpoint will be resolve the DNS for this particular DNS name and it will send the IP address back to this application so that's how you make sure that application one and application two accounts can resolve the DNS of each other application now let's bring more complexity to this here I have a new account coming into our organization application account three. Now this application need to do or resolve my application one and application two. And also need to resolve on-prem. The on-prem data center should also be able to resolve this application uh, three DNS. So what all changes we need to do? The very first thing, we need to associate this private hosted zone with my central or networking account VPC. Second thing, we need to share these tools with this application three account and associate it with the VPC. After that, uh, this VPC can resolve to these applications and on-prem application. And the third thing is we need to create a rule for this application as well, and then share this rule with the other application accounts so that these application account can resolve the DNS of this third application. So you see that any new change is coming, you have to do a lot of different changes like you have to do the association of this private hosted zone, you have to create the new rules and then share those rules across your different accounts. So here you can see the how, what kind of complexity and what kind of uh, effort involved bringing a new application or managing these existing applications DNS configuration. Now let's see how Route 53 profile can solve these challenges. We'll take our previous example where we built up our infrastructure and this is what uh, most of the customers have right now uh, to resolve their on-prem data center DNS or from on-prem data center to their applications or AWS hosted applications or from application to application DNS resolution. So we'll take this as a base infrastructure and we'll see how the Route 53 profile can simplify this whole architecture here. So for that, the very first thing we'll create the Route 53 profile in our networking account. And we're gonna associate this Route 53 profile with the VPC in our networking account. The second thing we're gonna do is we'll share this Route 53 profile via resource access manager to our applications accounts. So you will get instance of that in application account one and two then you can associate this Route 53 profile with the corresponding VPC in that account. And the next thing will be, you will associate the private hosted zone with this Route 53 profile. At this point, even though you have your current uh, environment or current associations there, by doing this all association, you are not disturbing anything. All your current traffic will still use your current path current infrastructure this is just the base or the uh, base infrastructure you are setting it up it's not impacting anything in your current environment now let's see that what all steps you need to do after you do this first basic step uh, to start leveraging your route 53 profile so very first thing what we are going to do we are going to delete these rules for application to application uh, dns resolution so after deleting these rules, now you see that if any requests originating from this application account one 
called this app2.example.com. There is no rule associated with it. And there is no direct VPC, or sorry, private hosted zone is also associated with it. So how this application will resolve? So there's no rule associated, there's no private hosted zone associated, but we do have a Route 53 profile associated with it, which is indirectly associated with this private hosted zone. So because this private hosted zone in other account is associated with the same Route 53 profile, this application will be able to resolve this DNS name. So you don't need to create any rule. You don't need to have any association of the private hosted zone directly with the VPC. So you see that simple, you don't need to create any rules at the networking account level. You just create the Route 53 profile, associate the private hosted zone, and share that profile or associated that profile with the other VPCs. From there, you can resolve this DNS name. The second, you can remove the association of these private hosted zones with the networking account VPC. Now, if any request originating from your on-prem corporate data center will come to your resolver inbound endpoint, now these VPCs are not directly associated, then it's gonna check, oh, we have a Route 53 profile associated. And with the Route 53 profile, we have this private hosted zone associated with it. So this inbound resolver endpoint should be able to resolve to this DNS names. So you don't need to do use any CLI to associate this private hosted zone with the central VPC, just associate it with the profile. And then every account which has uh, association with Route 53 profile, those VPCs or those accounts should be able to resolve to this private hosted zones. Third, we are going to associate this resolver rules as well with the Route 53 profile. By doing that, any request which is originating from this right now is going to this resolver rule because this is associated directly with it. So what we can do, we can remove this association as well. So what it will happen, there's no rule directly associated, but there is a rule associated through Route 53 profile. Because of that, it will take the same path. It will check, okay, I have a rule associated, so it request would go to the corresponding outbound resolver endpoint and it check, okay, where I should send this request, it will send the request based on this rule to the DNS server and it will resolve it. So you see that how easy it was and now we just have a Route 53 profile which is shared across your organization, across all the accounts and you just associate with this, this profile with the private hosted zone and the VPCs and you're done with that. Now. Let's see if I have a third account coming in or third application coming in, what are changes we need to do? The first thing, if you have shared your uh, Route 53 profile here, then it will be available in your application, uh, application account three as well, right? Then you just associate this with the VPC and the private hosted zone. And after that, you don't need to do anything. So what's gonna happen that if this VPC application need to resolve the DNS of the other two applications, it will be able to do it because these private hosted zones are associated with the Route 53 profile. If this application need to resolve any DNS name for the on-prem corporate data center, because my rule is associated with the Route 53 profile, it will work. And any request coming from on-prem will also be able to resolve the app3.example.com because this Route 53 profile is associated with the private hosted zone. So you see that how the South 53 profile simplified, simplified your whole infrastructure or the DNS management. You don't need to do the cross account sharing or cross account association of your private hosted zone. You can manage everything from a central place from a networking account. You just associate this with the VPC and the private hosted zone in the corresponding account wherever you need. So that's all I wanted to show you that how Route 53 profiles can help you to manage your DNS configuration, your inbound, outbound resolver endpoints, and how you can consolidate at everything and simplify your infrastructure and how you can migrate from your current environment to this Route 53 profiles. So thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please hit the like button and share it with your friends. And if you're new to our channel, please do subscribe. I'll bring more content on AWS in your future. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day.